Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna be taking you through RCMA's latest launch. This is their biggest launch since 1963, I believe. If you are new to RCMA, I know a lot of professional makeup artists use them. I would say one of their most hyped up products on YouTube was their, I can't even, is it invisible powder or no powder powder? I had purchased it and to be honest, I wasn't that crazy about it. I know they sell a ton of different like foundation and matrix wheels, but their big or I feel like personally for me their most well-known powder on YouTube was definitely their loose translucent powder so everything in the line is vegan cruelty free gluten free paraben free and talc free in today's video I will be sharing all four brand new launches starting off with their foundation these retail for $36 sorry I got some notes down here they're available in 36 different shades it says that it's a high intensity liquid foundation that gives a unique lightweight all-day wear our foundation enhances your natural radiance you'll be glowing at all occasions and events. The high defining liquid foundation is made with olive oil derived material, giving a full coverage hydration without clogging your pores. It helps replenish the skin while enhancing your already natural beauty. Next up, we have the liquid concealer. As you can see, it's just a baby to the mama liquid foundation. This one is available in 18 different shades and retails for $29. Like the foundation, it's made with an olive oil derived material. It's supposed to be a full coverage and it hydrates and replenishes the skin. You'll see in the demo, but a tiny bit goes a very long way and then the final two products are two different powders so they came out with a premier press powder this one retails for $28 there are four different shades this one claims to have more of like a luminous finish you guys the actual texture of this powder it's unreal it's so good I'm really hoping that they launch bronzers in the same formula because I, these are the moments where I wish like you could reach to the screen and just like here dip your finger in like your sanitized finger and swipe it across this powder. It is so soft, luxe, and silky. I'm already so impressed by this one. And then finally we have the Premier Loose Powder. This one is available in three different shades and it retails for $26. It says that it can be applied pre and post foundation, which I'll be getting into that later on during the demo. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. As I mentioned earlier, I do have three different shades here. I haven't worn this completely on my face yet. All that I've done is just little test swipes and whatnot. So the closest match I believe is N310. I always start on my right side just out of habit being right-handed, but I do wanna make a point to start on my left side because as you can see, this is where I just have like stronger, more prominent freckles. So figure if we start over here, then we can really see what the coverage is. I didn't even do a full like push down pump with that first application I just did halfway down. I'm gonna try both a sponge and a brush. For my sponge, this is basically the only beauty sponge I use these days. It's the Koki one, I freaking love it. It's either $5 or $6, either way, it's the best sponge. I prefer it over the Beauty Blender. I loved the Sonia Kashuk one and the Flower Beauty one in the past, but this definitely tops them all. Blending in nicely, as you can see, as you start to pat it in, the coverage does soak into the face so it doesn't stay like full and mask like personally this is the coverage that I love where it just kind of hides and just like minimizes redness or just uneven skin tone but still allows your skin to peek through let's apply some over here and blend it out with a brush and see how that goes this is the ColourPop F15 and see what we'll get with a brush while I do still have like lighter freckles, they're not as strong as these freckles right here. So I feel like no matter what I put over here, the coverage always looks better just because there's less to hide on that side. I can tell I definitely am getting more coverage with the brush, but to be honest, I actually prefer the feeling of the foundation on my skin more on this side with a sponge. Not that this side feels heavy, but it does feel heavier than what it feels like with a sponge, but I definitely notice that with pretty much any foundation that I use. Okay, and then just whatever's remaining on here, I'm just gonna kinda stamp along my chin and jaw. I'm really liking the look of this so far. It really does have just a natural radiance. It's nothing like glittery, shimmery, or dewy. It just has kind of like what your skin looks like before a foundation dries down all the way. So this side still just has a very, very subtle tackiness to it. However, this side feels pretty dry to the touch. It doesn't seem to like transfer off. There's no tackiness or anything on this side, but as you can see, it still isn't like flat and matte. I do just want to go in with like the tiniest bit. Oh, that was probably too much. Um, 
like right here where I have this dark sunspot and we'll just, we never actually put any straight onto my chin or my nose. So we'll just use the remainder for right there. So brush definitely is the way to go if you're wanting to keep it more solid medium coverage from the first layer. But if you don't mind building, then obviously you could start off with a sponge right away. But like I said, I don't know, I'm still gonna go in with a sponge after. I find when I really take the time to press a product in with my sponge, it just lasts on my skin much longer and just looks more natural. All right, so I'm gonna stop right there with two layers. I definitely can see it being able to build up to a full coverage, especially if you were to go in with an additional layer and still apply it with a brush. But I don't wanna go in and apply too much and end up hating it. But for me right here, I think this is the perfect amount of coverage. Even with one layer, it still looked really nice, but two layers, if you're going for just a put together makeup look, there's still zero thick, heavy, cakey feeling on my face, which is definitely key for me. I still love the finish of this. I just think it's very pretty and natural. Now moving on to the concealer. So this is where the full coverage part comes in. I could definitely tell that it is a full coverage product just from the initial swatching that I did whenever I unboxed this package. Here's the thing. I typically like a lighter concealer just to brighten up the under eyes, but I typically don't go this light. <laughs> For my concealer lately, I've been using the ColourPop F12 brush. I just love this one so much. So that, I can already tell you, was way too much concealer. I'm gonna take the tiniest bit and just start patting it in right on the inner corner. Honestly, I feel like the foundation gave me a lot of great coverage on my under eyes where I don't need to do too much. And then I always like to clean up right here. And let's just do some for the a little remaining redness around my nose. Now taking that same Koki cosmetic sponge. They weren't lying. A little bit of this goes a long way. I wish I would have gone with maybe N20 or N30 just because, ugh, I don't know, I feel like this almost looks, like I like the brightness that it's giving me, but I just feel like it's a little bit much, at least this time of the year. Okay, just taking a tiny bit more this is a concealer that's gonna last you a lifetime. I mean, if you're someone that really likes full, full coverage, you could always go in with this concealer and use it as your foundation too, because I mean, that was that first initial dot and I'm still kind of just using the product that I pulled over. So I have a pressed powder, which I'm kind of curious about trying on the under eyes because it's supposed to be more of like a luminous finishing powder. But then we also have the Premier Loose Powder, which this is made for blurring and just, you know, overall finishing the makeup. But they do in fact note that you can use this just like any other loose powder to substitute as a primer. For instance, if you're someone who's really oily, you can go in and use this as an oil controlling primer, just buffing this all in and then applying your foundation on top just to really lock it into place. So I think I will use the luminous finishing powder just for like the lower portions of my face and between between, between my brows, I've mentioned this many times in the past, this lower area here, just because if I'm leaning on my hand or I'm bad about touching my face, those areas I will kind of remove makeup, but not necessarily from like the oil on my face, just from me like touching things like a naughty person. But for the under eyes, I think we will go in and test out the loose setting powder today and then perhaps tomorrow or something, I'll try the pressed powder on my under eyes and share my thoughts over on IG stories. I'm curious to see what Topaz would look like. This is a product that has the little like mesh sifting screen in there along with this little sticker. This has a very silky, like that smoothing silica feeling that a lot of HD, for instance, the Makeup Forever HD translucent powder has. It's that same sort of just really soft, velvety feel. Go in and grab one of my favorite Amazon powder puffs. You can get like an eight pack of these or is it a six pack? It's six pack for around like five to eight dollars. It really depends. The price is always going up and down. They come in black and white and I just love them because as you can see, it has this nice sharp point where you can roll it right onto your under eyes. And look, I can already tell now it is starting to settle. When you got those fine lines and wrinkles, it's just kind of unavoidable. It's got a little bit of powder on the lid. Now taking the powder puff, I'm just gonna pick up some of that. And then I always kind of like to roll it into the puff, just removing some of the excess. Press it right onto the under eye. See with that corner, you can just get right up in there. I'm also gonna press this right onto the sides of my nose and my smile lines. 
I can definitely see the blurring quality in this powder. It's not really accentuating the dryness on my under eyes, which is good because while I do like to set the under eyes, I hate anything that ends up making it look even like crepier and just drier. I like using the shade Topaz just because with that little bit of tint, it definitely provides a little bit more coverage than what a traditional translucent setting powder would do. So far, so good. All right, now let's go ahead and test out the Premier Press Powder. Typically, this is where I would stop whenever it comes to setting powders. Since Topaz, I love the matte finish of the packaging. Since Topaz in the loose powder worked so well, let's go ahead and try Topaz in Press Powder. Quickly though, I just wanted to mention Amethyst. This one has a really nice, very soft pink tone to it. I bet that would be really brightening on the face. This powder actually feels even a bit silkier than the loose powder, which is weird. Typically like a loose powder just feels extra luxe and silky. So let's just take this and just buff it right here onto this lower portion of my face. Why not? You know what? Let's just go ahead and set this area here. I typically wouldn't because I like the finish, but I'm wanting to test out these products. You know what? I think I actually find the press powder to be more blurring than the loose powder. This one feels so nice on the skin. It just gives it a really soft, just like kind of airbrush quality. I don't know if I really would call it luminous though. I mean, it's not flat and matte, but mm, I have other powders that I would describe more as luminous. For instance, like the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders. Those in my mind are luminous. This just feels very like thin and silky and soft on the face while really helping with pores. All right, so as you can see, I did go ahead and apply the rest of my makeup just to quickly go over those details in case you were curious. On my lips, I went in with I think it was MAC Strip Down, just like a go-to lip liner, and then one of the new Too Faced Hangover Pillow Balms. The thing is, I actually hate the scent of this one. It's in Coco Kiss. It just smells kind of like chocolate pudding. I just love the overall color of it. I mean, it's very sheer on, just with like a very tint of this like nudie cocoa vibe, but on top of a lip liner, it's so pretty. I've been reaching for it a ton. And then for my bronzer, this is a newer palette that I received from Pixie. And for my blush, I'm wearing Charlotte Tilbury The Climax. And then for my highlighter, we have the Laura Mercier just classic matte radiance highlight 01 powder. As much as I loved the foundation, like just the overall finish of it without any powder, I still really like it with powder on top, which is pretty shocking for me because I typically go in with like a loose setting powder on my under eyes and my smile lines and that's it. I don't really set all over my face, but I have to say, I feel like like, especially between my brows, it just looks very airbrushed and smooth and just silky and blurred. I really do hope they come out with like brush brushes, <laughs> bronzers or blushes in this same Premier Press Powder formula because I'm telling you guys, this powder, I know I already talked about it in the intro, is so silky and blurring and smooth, but still feels so lightweight on the skin. Like honestly, it just feels like I went in with foundation and concealer and I didn't go in and pile more makeup on top. It truly is weightless. I'm so, so impressed by this. Don't get me wrong, I like the loose powder too, but the pressed powder is definitely where it's at for me. I was so impressed with just the blurring properties in this powder. Okay, so I'm the worst YouTuber ever, and the first day that I wore it that I was supposed to report back a few hours later, I had face planted and just like fallen asleep hard on the couch. We were watching movies, and yeah, I just like zonked out for the day. The main thing that I noticed is the area that I had fallen asleep on the pillow. There was no actual like makeup transfer on the pillow, but I could see right here on my jaw area that some of the makeup had been wiped off, but we were out and about that day in the humidity and I have to say I'm still really impressed by the wear time because I've been using this foundation for four days now and you guys I am so happy with it the concealer while I really like the coverage I'm thinking it's because the shade is too light right now that I can really see where it's not blending out but I just think that's because of the harsh shade difference but along with that, it definitely is a little bit tougher to blend out in comparison to the concealers that I typically use. For instance, the one from Too Faced, like the Born This Way concealer, the texture of that is way more fluid, so it just like really, really spreads. While this still does spread, it's very full coverage, so I just find that it's 
not necessarily super thick, but it is thicker versus like the Too Faced one or some of the other thinner concealers that I tend to use. Out of the two, I definitely prefer the foundation. I was trying my best to find something to compare this to. And I have to say the first one that comes to mind is the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear. Sort of coverage that you get from that, but how it just feels like invisible like on your face, you know, just to the touch. That's how this feels. It's great coverage without feeling thick and heavy on the skin. While I do still really like the loose powder, I have to say on my under eyes, I mentioned the very first time that I wore it that I noticed more of a blurring property with the press powder. I've been reaching for it time and time again. I'm still stating by what I said earlier, I really think our CMA would freaking kill it if they made this formula into a bronzer. Sometimes when I go in with a liquid foundation and then apply powder on top, I feel like when I smile or if I'm expressive with my face, I can feel everything on my face moving like the actual product just because it adds an additional layer this even on top of the full coverage of this foundation still doesn't feel like anything's on my face it's just a very comfortable formula and I'm guessing because how it said it was made of like olive oil derived material I guess it kind of gives a hydrating property to where you don't get that heaviness or cakiness on the face so the powder is so good. If you're only gonna get one powder, I personally really, really prefer the pressed one. I've used it both as a finishing powder and on my under eyes. Since I said it like helps to blur, I just found that it was really nice and smoothing on the under eyes. Even if you have oily skin, I do still think this formula would work because it's not overly dewy. It's not like a super wet moisturizing foundation. It just gives you a natural skin-like glow. So I honestly think it's a formula that would work for both dry and oily skin types but obviously if you are super oily go in with a method of doing a loose powder it doesn't necessarily have to be this one beneath and then the liquid foundation on top so there you have it i know this review is a bit long but i just wanted to make sure i give you both the first impression and followed it up with an actual review just because when it comes to foundation i think a long-term review is definitely much more helpful i'd love to know do you plan on picking up any of these products if so which one do you have any other recommendations from our cma i'm like crossing my fingers, please make a bronzer because oh, it would be so good. All right, but that is pretty much it for today. Thanks so much for hanging out and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.